my name is Mr. Cleophos and today I want us to just do a past paper question and uh, auditing and assurance. Auditing and assurance is one unit in CPA intermediate level and I want to do a past paper question the latest past paper question latest underline the word latest i'm preparing my followers i'm preparing my students i'm preparing casneb students and also any other person who is doing any course is going also to be assisted when i tackle this concept or this question it is covering various areas in auditing and assurance. And please ensure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I want, I want to do, uh, I guess, 2022. I guess this is a question in August. 2022. Question number, I guess 2022, question number two. Remember this is auditing and assurance. These past papers, this is a customer past paper, they are online. And uh, again, I know that those who have the soft copies, please, in case you need one, just Hold on, just give me a call. Uh, the question reads, describe four strategies. Describe four strategies. That's question four. No, sorry, question two A. I'll start with part A of the question. Describe four strategies that an auditor may deploy. Strategies that an auditor may Deploy to reduce exposure, to reduce exposure to professional liabilities. So strategies that auditor may apply to reduce exposure to professional liabilities. Those who have been in my class, they understand this question very well. They can answer it very well. And now I want you to just listen to this as I explain about briefly about auditor's liability. After auditor has given his report and after reporting for an audit in short, auditor is exposed to potential liabilities. Auditor can be sued, can be taken to court by the client under whom maybe there have been a contract. And this tells you that if auditor is found, if auditor is found to be in gross negligence, in the performance of the audit, I repeat, I've said, if auditor is found to be in gross negligence in performance of his work or in performance of the audit, then he can be held legally liable. So, we have types of auditor's liability briefly, which I want to mention there in my YouTube channel. Look for that part, you'll see. One of the types of auditor's liability, we have the first three, which I'm going to give the civil liabilities of the auditor. So, if the examiner tells you, explain the auditor's civil liabilities. We will explain the first one. Liability under private audit. That's the first type of auditors. Liability number two, 
liability under uh, that I've said number one, liability under statutory audit. Number two, liability under private audit. Then number three, liability to third parties. And the last, so those first three, the first three I've mentioned, liability under private, liability under statutory audit, and liability to third parties, they make the civil liabilities of the auditor. Then another type of the auditor's liability is liability, uh, the, which you call the criminal liability, sorry. It's called the criminal liability. Now, the question needs you to give strategies or ways. These are just the ways of reducing the auditor's professional liability. One of the ways of reducing the liability of the auditor, it is use of the appropriate level of assurance. That's one. Number one, use of the appropriate level of assurance. So this means if, for example, the auditor is performing an audit because the level of assurance is issued based on the task or the engagement. In case of an audit, then auditor is expected or auditor should issue or give highest level of assurance. I've said in case of an audit of financial statements, then auditor gives the highest level of assurance. In case of an attestation or a review function, so if auditor is performing a review function, then he gives the moderate level of assurance. That is in case of attestation or attest function or a review function. Another way of reducing the liability of the auditor is use of a disclaimer. A disclaimer is a warning. So in case auditor realizes that he do not want, or in case auditor do not want other parties to rely on his report, like that parties, he can attach a disclaimer to the report to stop reliance on his report by third parties in making decisions is a way of reducing liability of the auditor. Number one, number next. Uh, use of engagement letter to clarify important matters. Use of engagement letter to clarify important matters. In the engagement letter, which is a letter written by the auditor to the client's company or management to formally accept the appointment to be the client auditor. In that letter, auditor will clarify very well that the objective of the audit and the responsibility and the primary responsibility of the auditor or the primary responsibility of him is to express an opinion. He is going also to clarify that the responsibility of detecting frauds and errors is uh, or rests with the management and it is not the auditor's primary responsibility. Because many companies may take auditor to court. Many clients may just think of suing the auditor because of maybe the auditor never detected errors and fraud. It is important for companies to know very well that in case of a final audit or an external audit, the objective is to express an opinion. It is not to detect frauds and errors. That one will come in if it was a forensic audit. Another way of minimizing auditor's liability is, ways of minimizing auditor's liability is obtaining. Professional indemnity insurance cover. Indemnity, just uh, said indemnity, insurance cover, 
or where you obtain the professional insurance cover, which protects auditors against all civil liabilities. So we can obtain an insurance cover to protect ourselves as auditors from all civil liabilities. It's a way. Again, another way is where auditor follows or use, let me just put it say, auditor should follow or adopt the quality controls. Quality controls, these are the policies and procedures put in place by audit firms to ensure that audit work is done as per the standards and that they give quality services to the client. So, example for quality control is like consultation. For us to give proper or for us to minimize their liability as auditors, Let's consult with experts where necessary so that we give the appropriate and the valid opinion, thus reducing the chances of being taken to court by our clients or being sued. So these are ways of minimizing auditor liability. Also, proper planning is also another way. Proper controlling of the audit work is also another way of reducing the auditor's liability. Great. So, uh, allow me again to go to part B of the question. Question 2B. Question number 2B. Question number 2B. So, that is so question 2A. I've done 2A. Let me go to 2B. So very well, so I'll do question number two, but part B. Question number two B. Uh, let me read it. It says, auditors are frequently required to provide, auditors are frequently required to provide assurance for a broad range of non-audit engagement. I've said, Auditors are frequently required to provide assurance for a broad range of non-audit engagements. Required Roman 1, so Roman 1 of number 2B, summarize four elements of an assurance engagement. Elements, four elements of an assurance engagement i will give you five instead of four so that if you are doing an exam it becomes very easy any assurance engagement it there must be a three-party relationship one is three-party relationship one of the party is practitioner. If it's an audit, the auditor is the practitioner. We have responsible party. Responsible party. Also, the last party here. The last, let me put them this way. Uh -huh. The other party is the intended user. Intended user. Those are the three parties. So, any engagement to be an assurance engagement, there must be three party relationship. There must be the practitioner, the responsible party, and the intended user. Number two, another element of assurance is in the evidence or sufficient evidence, which this involves the terms of engagement between practitioner and the client and the need to obtain enough evidence during the engagement. Another one is subject matter. So subject matter, it is what? The subject of what? Analysis. So subject matter is number three. 
And this is the subject of analysis in the engagement. In case it is an audit, the subject matter is the financial statements. And it is a subject of an uh, analysis over which evidence needs to be obtained. So when I told you to explain, you say, this is the subject of an analysis over which uh, evidence is required to be obtained. And in case it's an audit, the subject matter of analysis is the financial statements. So e.g. financial statements. Also, we have number four, suitable criteria is another one, suitable criteria, suitable criteria. So these are the benchmarks, benchmarks used to evaluate the subject matter. Benchmarks, like they are like the standards. You evaluate your, the, or you evaluate the subject matter or the financial statements Based on what? You do the audits as per the standards. So these are the standards or the benchmarks used to evaluate the subject matter, e.g. international accounting standards, international financial reporting standards, international standards on auditing, ETC. Then another one is conclusion, is the last one, or the report. This report is based on the evidence obtained. So conclusion is the report uh, which is based on that evidence obtained. These are the four elements. No, these are five. The exam that needed four, I've given you five because they are five elements of assurance engagement. Can I go to the next Roman two? Yes, let me go to Roman two. Let me go to Roman 2. And you know, sometimes people have wondered, how do I pass this paper? How do I pass this paper? And that is what many people are asking. Some have been failing this paper. And I'm telling you, if you have been in my class, failing, it is not an option. You never, No one fails in my class. And by the way, if you think it's a joke, you can join regional college. I'm telling you the truth. Last sitting, no one failed my paper. You can ask them. Everyone passed this paper. There's not even one in my class who failed this uh, auditing and assurance. It's not because of anything. I normally try to do the past paper questions. I try to tell my students on how to tackle the exam. And again, I tell them areas they expect to be in that paper. It is a paper I've taught for many years. It is a paper I've been teaching. It is a paper I have a good experience. And my notes, it's me who have made them. I've sat down, prepared the notes, try to summarize these notes. That's why I know them off head. I can explain and expound on them. And this one has helped many students in understanding auditing and assurance, and even her loving the units. Then my students will normally interrupt. I ask question, you answer me. You answer wrongly, I tell you the correct answer. That's why I decided, let me help people, those who want to pass in this paper. Please just give me a call. If you want to pass the paper, give me a call. And you know what? I take time to just teach you. So sometimes people just send me questions Answer this one for me, answer this one for me. I may not have time. Always, I, I may not have enough time to answer you if there is no contract. In the auditor's liability, we normally say, auditor can be held legally liable by the client under whom there is what? The contract, right? My contract is not very expensive, please. Let me continue. And thank you for my followers. And uh, because I've realized... My YouTube channel has been growing the very fast in the last few days. And for that reason, I want to thank those who are following me over my YouTube channel or through my YouTube channel. May God bless you. So let me do part two of the question 2B, part, part two of the part section B of the question. Section B says distinguish between reasonable assurance and limited assurance. Distinguish between 
reasonable assurance reasonable assurance and limited assurance at its formats so let's start with reasonable reasonable assurance the definition uh, of this reasonable when you explain you say this is an assurance whose objective is to reduce the assurance engagement risk to a reasonably low level to low level in the circumstances of engagement. Uh -huh. It is expressed in positive terms and thus it's known as positive assurance. So it is also known as positive assurance. It is given where the risk is reasonably low. It's given or expressed where the assurance engagement risk, where the assurance engagement risk is low. Then when explaining the other one which is limited assurance, so that's about reasonable assurance. It's an assurance whose objective is to reduce the assurance engagement risk to a reasonably low level or to a low level in the circumstances of engagement. It is expressed in positive terms. And thus, it is known as, or it is also known as, positive assurance. It is given where the assurance engagement risk is low. So let me explain the other one, limited assurance. So let me talk of limited you also say this is an assurance this is an assurance engagement whose objective is to reduce the assurance engagement risk the assurance engagement risk to low level but where the risk is high than in a reasonable assurance. Or you can leave it, and, but where the risk is high. It is expressed, another point is say, it's expressed or given in negative or using negative terms, using negative terms and thus it is also known as and thus it's also known as negative assurance it is also known as what negative assurance so that is the roman two question to be Roman two.
I will do part C of the question to question number 2C. Let me do question 2C. Question 2, but now part C of the question 2. It says, your firm has been appointed as incoming auditors of Taratibu Motors Limited. I've said, your firm has been appointed as incoming auditors of Taratibu Motors Limited. Part of the engagement, sorry, part of the argument is a proposal of undertaking of continuous audits on the company's financial statements. So it says part of the agreement is a proposal of undertaking of continuous audits on the company's financial statements. It required, explain four disadvantages of conducting the proposed continuous audits. So the question requires the disadvantages disadvantages of a continuous audit disadvantages of continuous audits a continuous audit is an audit which is conducted throughout the accounting period it is under this type of audit auditor mostly arranges his visitations with the client at predetermined intervals. So auditor is mostly all the time in the client's premises. And if auditors are there, they will be paid. Thus, it is expensive in terms of the fee. One is expensive in terms of audit fee. Another one, Another advantage, or not advantage, but disadvantage of an audit, it is that interrupts, any audit interrupts the client's company, client company accounting process. Due to the need for the auditor to obtain evidence due to the need for the auditor to obtain evidence. Another one leads to an healthy relationship leads to an healthy relationship between audit and the client and client management. Let me put it that way. Because you'll get used to auditors, they are all the time they're there, so there's that over familiarity. It is also monotonous. It is monotonous. That's another disadvantage. And that is what examiner needed you to give. Maybe you say it is time consuming. Yeah, time consuming. And that is what the examiner needed. That was the last city question, number 2C. This is also question number 2D. Last question, number 2D. 2D. It says, let me look at 2D. Question number 2D.
2D says, Kilimo Sacco has recently automated its loan processing and disbursement activities. Kilimo Sacco has recently automated its loan processing and disbursement activities upon purchase of an enterprise resource planning, which is an ERP system. You have been requested to review the processing controls of the system. So required suggests four processing controls that the system should possess upon full implementation. Four processing controls that the system should possess upon implementation. One, there should be accuracy controls. Also, the control, another one is completeness controls. Authenticity. Authenticity controls. Privacy controls. So you need to suggest four of these processing controls which need to be possessed upon implementation. So this is a must be there in this ERP system. Accuracy control, completeness control, authenticity controls, privacy controls. And that is what was expected of you in the last city question number two. Remember, I did question number one in another video. So I've done question number two. And now the next one I shall be doing is question three, then four and five. So thank you guys for watching my video in this question of August 2022, Auditing and Assurance. The latest question, August 2022. Question number two, have done it. And I've said, in case you need my assistance, please give me a call through my number, the number which is there, and which is 0714-023-691. Those who are watching my channel outside Kenya, you start with plus 254. That is our call in Kenya. Then from there, you just continue. So it will be plus five, plus two, five, four, seven, one, four, zero, two, three, six, ninety, one. I've seen, I've realized I have also some people watching me from different countries. I've been receiving calls. I've been also receiving some emails, some messages, and WhatsApp messages mostly. For those people who want my assistance, I've been helping and training them. And I know... This channel is going to grow very big. It's going to grow within the shortest time possible. It's going to be of help to the Kenyans and the non-Kenyans who are following me. I know soon and very soon, you're going to recommend some people to follow or subscribe to my channel, not just following. I've realized many people, they are just followers. They have not subscribed. Please ensure you subscribe. It's the only way you can promote my channel. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I'm telling those who are doing CPA and they're in Kenya, Nairobi, please join the regional college. You'll find me there. You'll meet me. We shall discuss. We shall see how we can help each other. You'll do this CPA within the shortest time. Those who are doing SCCA, please, I'm also teaching F2. I'm also teaching F8. Ensure that you just give me a call. I can help you. I can help you in maybe whatever, whichever course you're doing. Because I teach statistics. That's QT. I teach auditing and assurance. I teach auditing, I teach advanced auditing. I teach management accounting. So if you have an, any challenge, any area you need my clarification on my intervention, please engage me. And I just want to ensure you one thing. I, would, I always give quality services. And that is why sometimes some people may say, oh, Mr. Cleo Fauzi, you've overcharged me. Not overcharging. Anything of quality is expensive, but not very expensive for me. And I'll try to be reasonable and at least be reasonable again when it comes uh, to your side. So that at least we can help each other. 
If it's an assignment you need more explanation that you can tackle it, please I'll be there to help you in tackling such assignments and explaining to you in maybe uh, using simple or we normally say the layman's language. Keep in touch with Mr. Cleophus. The channel is CPA Cleophus. Thank you so much. Let's meet in the next uh, video.